Well, it, it's a possibility. No, it's not. What we'll do is we'll buy him some food and, and we'll get him something he likes. There isn't any place left we can get food, Jody. I know. I know. We can't go back to the general because they've probably seen our picture in the paper, even if we did buy the last copy. Yeah. Some pictures, huh? Well, we actually don't look bad side by side there. Hey, um, I got an idea. Where are you going? I'll be back in a minute. You know what? I don't care what Kelly says. You should have a name. Hey, do you like the name Muffin? Well, I hope so. Because that's your name from now on. So please get better, Muffin. I hate to see you sick. Kelly? Stay right where you are. Don't move. Yeah, I said hold it. Both of you. I'm from the Shaw office. Officer, we weren't doing anything wrong. Well, you don't think housebreaking is wrong, huh? And you, turn around. Put your hands up against that door. No, I, I don't have a gun on me or anything. You, you can look for yourself. And we're not housebreakers. Well, you're not very good ones, I'll say that. I saw the smoke coming out of the chimney, and I know this house has been empty for a long while. Yeah, well, so, uh, how do you know we don't belong here? Because nobody's ever out here this time of year, that's how. Yeah, well, we are. You see, uh, our aunt and uncle said uh, we could stay out here for a while. Oh, you're, you're part of the family, huh? Right. <coughs> that's right. We're, we're family, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, see this picture over here? Uh, this is uh, my Aunt Lucy and my Uncle Ricky. Um, see? Right there. Why should I believe that? I don't know if you're related to these people or not. Well, here, I can also... Well, watch yourself. No trick. Oh, no tricks. Okay. Uh, this is... See this? Just take a look right here. See? That's us. It sure does look like you two. Oh, well, it is us. Uh, see, we are members of the family. Why else would they have a portrait of us around? Yeah, well... I guess that makes sense. <laughs> well, gee, I'm sorry, but you never know, now, do you? No, I, I guess you never know, uh, uh, do you, uh, Ethel? Uh, yeah, that's right, Fred. Uh, just the same, you know. Now, it is my job to look after these houses when the folks are away in the winter. Well, officer, let me be the first one to tell you that you're doing a wonderful job. I mean, my Aunt Lucy and Uncle Ricky are going to be really pleased. Uh, well, I hope I didn't scare you too much. Oh, don't mention it, officer. Um, what'd you say your name was? Uh, it's Glover. Officer Glover. Well, uh, I mean to tell you that, that my Uncle Ricky is really tight with the mayor of this town. And next time I see him, I'm going to tell him to put in a really good word for you, you know? The mayor, now, now the town supervisor. Oh, that, that's what I meant, the oh. town supervisor, right. Yeah. Well, as long as I didn't scare you too much, that's all that matters. No, no, and no. I guess I'll be going. Okay. Well, is, uh, is something the matter with your dog there? No, no, he's just a little sick. But he's going to be all right. Well, I guess I should have known a couple of housebreakers would never bring a dog with them. That's right. Well, you kids enjoy yourself. And I hope you've got plenty of wood for that fire, because it is not going to get any warmer around here. A careful partner. <laughs> well, so long. You bet, Officer Glover. Have a nice day now. <coughs> Bye now. Oh! <laughs> you are my hero! <laughs> oh, that was
always quick thinking, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I just wanted to see what those two pictures look like side by side in a frame. I never knew they were going to come in handy like well, that. Fred, you're a genius. Fred? Where'd you get the name Fred? Same place you got the name Ethel. Do you know what? What? It doesn't matter what your name is. I think you're terrific. Oh, come here. I think they're horrible, Nancy. I don't care. I don't care what excuses people make for them. They're too young. They don't understand. I think Jody and Kelly are just plain selfish. I know. I know they're thinking of themselves. I am having a very hard time trying to understand them. I know you're concerned about your nephew, but I... I can't help but think that if Kelly hadn't run away, Jody would still be here. Oh, who knows who had the idea. Yeah. Kelly was afraid of the law. Jody was afraid of... Afraid of what? All I see is Nicole's face, and it's very pale, and there's a very hopeless look in her eyes. But it isn't hopeless, Abel. Not yet. I feel certain that th she's going to be able to have that transplant. Not without Jody. Jody is the only possible donor. She knew that. She knew it when she took off and refused to give Nicole her bone marrow. Now, I may not know Kelly as well as I thought I did, but I do know he's not callous. As far as Jody is concerned, I really don't. But from what Miles and Nicole have told me, even now, she's got to be decent. Well, she better prove it quickly. Especially after everything Nicole has done for her. What's the use? I mean, the whole world is just plain unfair. Yeah. Well, it's the only world we have, so we, it's up to us to make the best of it. Yeah. Well, you try. I mean, you try. You try to believe that people are basically decent <laughs> until they want something. I mean, until they really want something. And then it is absolutely amazing the lengths people will go to to get what they want. You know, Jody really wanted that job with the dance company, but now, of course, she can't have it running away. It's funny, I wasn't even thinking of Jody. I think of somebody else. It didn't take very long. You know, Mike, it's a waste of time coming out of the courthouse. I told you it was going to be one of those cases that would take either 10 minutes or drag on for 10 days. Unfortunately, it was the former. Well, I wish all of our cases could be solved that easily. To say nothing of our personal problems. Well, some problems have quick solutions, Draper. Not the ones I'm thinking about. Oh, oh Logan, good, good morning. morning. Oh, Logan. If you uh, came to be a spectator, you missed all the action. Well, yeah, Draper told me how to tough you today. He picked me up and gave me a ride down to work. Man, well, it wasn't as tough as we thought it would be. Mm. Micah, everybody has settled out of court. We could have phoned the whole thing in. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Could I buy you lunch? He wants to buy his lunch. What's the catch? Catch? Moi? <laughs> <laughs> no, I could pick your brains if it would be all right with you. I could use some information about Seward Paxton and Whiteside. Seward Paxton? What's your interest in that? Oh, Mike, I didn't say anything. Logan's been putting out some feelers to some... Big law firms outside Monticello. Well, inside Monticello would sort of defeat my purpose, wouldn't it? You're kidding. Are you still thinking of leaving town? If the job is tempting enough, yes. I know I've got a good thing here as district. He's been in touch with like Seward, Paxton, and Whiteside. It's ironic, isn't it? I mean, you and I wanted the job, and now he's going after it. That same job is open again, the head of the criminal division? It's still open. At least that's what Mr. Seward says. Oh, you've already spoken to Seward. I was on the phone to him five minutes ago. He asked if I'd be interested in the job, and I said yes, I would. Quite a shock. Yeah, I'm surprised, too. I thought you'd gotten this nonsense about leaving Monticello out of your system. You promised us that if you won the case, you were going I'm to stay. Honest, I didn't promise you anything. But you did win custody of Jamie. Uh, seems to me you've got everything you want here. Well, not quite everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I might have steered my career in the wrong direction. I mean, yeah, I can be district attorney of Monticello for the next three years, but if I'm going to make that million, uh, New York's the place for that. Well, I can't say I'm happy about the news. Of course, Seward Paxton's a top firm, probably one of the best in the country. God knows I broke my back trying to get that job. You may be uh, giving up too much, though, Logan. I know how much I'll be giving up, Mike. For one thing, two of the best friends that I could ever hope to have. But I won't lose the friendship. It's just going to be more difficult to drop in in court and see how you're doing. Well, I really think you ought to think it over, Logan. You're making a big mistake. I never know. Might not even get the job. They take one look at me in New York and decide they want somebody else. Oh, I doubt that, Logan. Not if they consider your record and your talent. 
But to be perfectly honest, I think you'd like them, too. Uh, they're good people, and they do an excellent job for their clients. Come on, Mike. Very, Jim. Well, frankly, if you're determined to leave, it's about the only job I'd want you to take. But I still think it's the wrong move. Logan, you're the top law official in Monticello. Now, you can't make a million dollars in the DA's office, but you could do a lot of good. What about your son? Do you think that New York is the right place to bring him up? Matter of fact, that might be a problem. You gave Raven some very generous visitation rights. Yeah, that could be a problem. If she wants to kick up a fuss, she could keep me from going. Well, what do you know? For the first time ever, Raven and I are on the same side. Jerry, can't you do something? You are the law, and he broke the law. I cannot arrest Cliff Nelson for just talking. He wasn't just talking. He practically broke into my house. Now, we've got breaking and entering and slander. It's Those are crimes. Slander's a civil matter. You want to take him to court and sue him? Go ahead. Don't be ridiculous. I can't take him to court. Then the whole town would find out that he's accusing me of murder. Hey, come on. Cliff Nelson is just a big kid. Now, why do you let him get to you? This? Because he told me that you were preparing a case against me. That's not true. How do I know that's not true? You're a dedicated cop. Maybe you just, you're just trying to get a confession out of me by pretending you like me. And do you really think I'm pretending? Hmm? I don't know. I'm just beginning to trust that you care about me. Oh, Derek, can't you do something? It doesn't have to be anything official. What does that mean? Well, you could, um, drop a hint to a couple of your really big policemen and they could, you know, rough him up a little bit. You want me to lean on him like they're doing gangster movies? Well, yes. I mean, I, I don't want you to hurt him, but just sort of get him to stop pestering me. If you suggest to me one more time that I do something unofficial to Cliff Nelson, I'm going to take you over my knee and do something unofficial to your bottom. Is this Kelly McGrath? Yeah, that's the picture we're using for identification. All right, I suppose if you feel better, I've made the man unofficial. What? I've issued a warrant for his arrest. I'm charging him with the murder of Elliot Dorn. <laughs> Derek! Derek, you've made me the happiest girl in the world! Well, that's not why I had the warrant issued. Now, will you get off my desk? I know that Cliff Nelson knew about this arrest before he came to see me. I bet he was making a last desperate attempt just to try to pin it on me. Well, now maybe you'll stop worrying about this so much. It's not an airtight case, but it's as good a case as we can get without having an actual confession. This is fabulous. I knew he did it the whole time. He had that awful fight with Elliot, and then it was his puppet that, that was used as a glove to hide the fingerprint. Well, we're all pretty sure that he committed all the attacks, even though Molly Sherwood wasn't attacked with a knife. No doubt about it. I knew you could do it. <laughs> well, we had some pretty obvious facts. You're brilliant. Oh, well, now Logan has to take it to the grand jury and get in. Does Logan agree with that? Yeah, he does. Well, then there's no problem. Chief, uh, uh, yeah, come on in, Calvin. You got something about the runaways? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Great, great, I can't wait to hear it. Well, you're not going to hear anything. This is confidential. You are going to excuse yourself, please. All right, all right, I know what I'm not wanting. By the way, congratulations on finding Elliot Dorn's murderer. I'm sure you had something to do with it. Well, actually, very little, Raven, so thank you very much. Uh, and we haven't caught up with Kelly McGrath. Yes. Uh, well, I'm sure Deborah Saxon would be real happy to hear about this, huh? Bye-bye. Bye. Go on, Kel. Well, uh, actually, Chief, I came to report, but I'm afraid I don't really have that much information. Um, I did, however, locate the uh, clerk who sold Kelly McGrath the tickets. He remembered that there were two young people, and uh, he remembers their destination because he picked it himself. He did? Yeah, he says the uh, man asked him how far they could go for 60 bucks, so he figured out it was Philadelphia. Well, I suppose that's something. Well, I think it may be a little less than meets the eye, Chief. Uh, you see, they uh, probably got off the bus in Philadelphia and could have hitched almost anywhere from there. Yeah, yeah by now they could be out to sea. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they are, there may be more truth than poetry in that phrase, Chief. You see, the, uh, the ticket clerk, he remembers uh, something that Kelly and Jody were discussing. He said they were talking about going to the ocean. The ocean? That would be the Jersey Shore. I got a plan here somewhere. That. Yeah, I don't plan to be at the hospital till late this afternoon. Jeremy, I just cannot go on neglecting the patients the way I've been. Uh, uh, what I was hoping you would do is stop by Nicole's room and spend a little bit of time with her. Just reassure her, you know. 
No, the point is, it, it'll mean a lot more to her coming from you than from me. I now she assumes that her husband is telling her optimistic lies, and I'm afraid she's right. Uh, hold on a second, would you? Yeah. Yeah, right away. Jeremy, I've got to go. I'll see you at the hospital later. Thanks a lot. Mr. Val, please come on in. I can't tell you how grateful I am you took the time to stop by. Thank you. Oh, well, I am as worried about Judy as you are, Doctor. Well, I don't think that's quite possible. Please sit down. Thank you. Well, I think this is the first time I have been in the doctor's office for non-medical reasons. Well, actually, the reason I asked you to stop by isn't entirely non-medical. Of course, it, it does concern Jody. I've been told how important you suddenly became in her life. Yes, I liked her very much the moment I saw her. She's a very talented girl. Is she? Yes. yes, well, she is a very insecure young girl at the moment. I'm sure you've gathered that. Yes, I really don't know what's happened. You see, she seems so very happy to join my dance company. As if it was the most fantastic thing that can occur to her. Well, it, it was. It was. I mean, you should have seen her when she first came home telling us that she had been hired. She was, she was glowing like the sun and the moon put together, really. Yes. Well, I, you know, she's run away and I still don't understand. Well, I was hoping, Mr. Val, that you, you might be able to give us some kind of a clue, no matter how small, as to where she might have gone. I know you were the last one, apart from my wife and myself, to have spoken to her before she disappeared. Well, no, I'm very sorry. I knew you had something like this in mind, but honestly, I really don't know where so she's well, I meant just even the slightest thing she might have said, or I thought she might have contacted you about the dance company. No, she called Gavin, that's all. I'm very sorry. I, I, I really wish I could help you. All right. I understand. I, I just thought it was worth a try. Well, there is something I can tell you. You know, if you ever want to find Gavin, there is only one place you should look for. Where is that? Dancers are always attracted by dance studios, as if by magnets. Sooner or later, she will show up in one. Oh, that's trouble. Later would be too late. Too late for Jody? No, for my wife, Mr. Bell. You see, without Jody, she will die. It's worth celebrating. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we take all of our cash and put it together and go out and blow it on one big meal? Kelly, that's a great idea. One real meal with meat and potatoes and salad and things like that. Sure, well, let's do it then. We'll find that diner we saw. I don't know. I, I hate to leave Muffin. Hey, Muffin will be all right. I don't like to leave her alone, Kelly. Oh, she's exhausted. She'll probably sleep all night. Uh, yeah, we'll bring her a bone, okay? Is it a deal? Mm, all right, it's a deal. <laughs> we'll live recklessly, but at least we'll eat. <laughs> and, and there's one other thing. Uh, I want to celebrate something else. I think I'm in love. Oh, Jim. I want to thank you for coming by this morning. I really appreciate it, especially considering your very busy schedule. I always have time for friends. April, are you sure there isn't anything I can do for you? No, nothing. Thanks. Okay. I'm going to see Nicole later today. Can I do anything at the hospital for you? No, I don't think so. I, I plan on going back there myself this evening. Hun, are you sure that you... Oh, excuse me. What are you doing here, Emily? April, I know I promised you I wouldn't be a pest about anything, and here I am bothering you about something so trivial. Hello, I'm Emily Michaels. Haven't I met you before? Oh, I, I don't think so, Mrs. Michaels. I'm Nancy Carr. It's Mrs. Michaels. I guess I'm going to have to make sure people start calling me I thought me I that. told you I didn't oh, April, want... please don't get so angry. It's just the silliest little thing. I went to light my stove, and I realized I didn't have a match in the place. Yeah, just go right down the basket on the table. Take all you want. There's enough to keep you supplied for months. Thank you. It's really very kind of you. You know, I am sure I've seen you. Leave before. Emily. I know where it is. 
I've seen you on the WMON news, isn't that right? Uh, yes, temporarily I'm there until Nicole Drake comes back. Well, isn't that interesting? I want you to leave. You promised me that you would not bother us, and I intend to hold you to that promise. Our friend isn't very hospitable, is she? That's enough, Emily. Don't mind her, Mrs. Carrie. and I are really the best of friends, and we're going to even get closer in the future, aren't we? If you don't leave this house within the next two minutes, I swear I will throw you out. I swear to God I will. Well, I wouldn't want that to happen. So I guess I'd better leave. Goodbye, Mrs. Carr. It's nice meeting you. And I look for you on the news tonight. As a matter of fact, I can give you a news flash. Did you know that April's husband's going to be a father again? And I'm the mother to be. everybody's using. You're using a massive North Vietnamese offensive against the South is a turning point in the war as American confidence experiences a sudden reversal. The 10,000 day war tonight on CBC. Hello, I'm Hannah Gartner. Stay tuned for Take 30 Forum as we examine children in the first three years of life. What they learn, what they can be taught. Next.